up, guys? I'm Aaron. I'm Sam. And we are Cedar Valley Homesteading, and we are back. Uh, some extenuating circumstances. We have not been posting, um, but we're going to start today. Uh, all, the ep <coughs> all the episodes that have not aired will just be archived, and they may air later. Uh, but we are going to get Sam's jam-making episode up. As you see, we're having brunch outside, cooking on an open flame. And, uh, yeah, we're super excited to be back. Um, we have some friends coming from another potential homestead to see the operation. Uh, uh, all of our uh, make-it-work situations. Uh, that'll be later today, about 2 o'clock. It's noonish now, and uh, we're going to get going on some of the chores that we have to do. We really don't have much to do because we did a lot getting ready for Reagan's little birthday party yesterday. Uh, our big four-year-old over there in her overalls, that <laughs> granny friend got her. And uh, yeah, we're going to get rolling on today and show you what's up. pile is not cool. Mom, I, can, I can hold a camera since I have my overalls. Oh yeah. Come on buddy. I moved her up there. We have a chicken to butcher today. She's been helping to tear apart the other ones. She's actually one of the leaders tearing apart the other ones. So, bye bye. We're gonna butcher a chicken for our friends today to show them how to do it. Hi, Red. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, she was hungry, so she was looking for food. We have once again moved them. <laughs> this is probably a month's worth of moving them now. They have made it to the front yard. No chicken poop on it. We're good. Oh, you did find eggs. Good job. You want to get in there and see if you can find more in the yard? That is a duck egg. Did you check, catch a chicken? I just cut in corn. 
You let you caught foghorn the leghorn. Thanks, sweets. Go back in the chicken coop. Well, you got to go check in the yard. Black Asian, Buff Warpington, Duck. <laughs> Did a video on Instagram yesterday asking what you are teaching your children and who's teaching your children. Our kids can raise chickens and pigs and plant gardens and start fires. That one right there is actually really good at starting fires. Uh, and who is teaching your children? Because Sam was working on homeschool curriculum today before we came outside. Yep. So, hey, put her down. Noah. who's uh, teaching your kids? Uh, Sam, what happened yesterday? Godzilla got out. <laughs> Big boy right there. Man of the hour himself. You see he's got marks on his ears because we initially tried to lasso him and pull him in by his head and he choked himself out and put himself uh, to sleep for a second. Nope, don't put that in there. And uh, thanks to my friend Casey and his wife and Sam, we were able to get the hogs back in. They're jumping out over there, but luckily we put this. It definitely works. It definitely works. I hit myself last night with it. Both arms, right to the chest. Um, so they can't get out Hopefully now they'll just not try to jump over as they get electrocuted. But as you see, everything's pretty bent up and dug up. This will be our last venture with hogs. We're moving on to goats and to a dairy cow in the very near future. Look at this. Look at all the colors. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a great deal. Thank you. Over the last couple days, the leaves have fallen because it's been so windy. It's like we didn't even have a fall, really. It keeps going back and forth between 28 and 80. Yeah. He looks to be doing okay. He trotted over here. Okay. okay, you know, you're not going to ride the tractor. They're down here harvesting tomatoes that are dead. Some of them are falling off and rotten. And cantaloupe. Yeah. My brother-in-law and nephew are down here chopping wood for the winter. That they just All went right. and got. Come on, kids. Climb on up over. Yeah, there we go, guys. No, come on. You got to get some work in, son. You got to get some work in, son. Uh, I don't know. I would just go with the tomatoes. But yeah, we're going to get, I'm going to go over and pick the cantaloupe and, uh, they're going to continue to pick tomatoes. Okay, so, fruit acquired, water heater gone. Uh, that was from a, several months ago, if you guys remember, our water heater busted. We had more important things than getting it out of the laundry room. We got a new refrigerator that if we take the tray out of the freezer it becomes a freezer so because of that we had to move the water heater out because now we have a freezer a stand-up freezer we have the chicken infirmary because of getting picked on by a well summer that we have separated that our friends are going to see us I'm going to show them how to butcher today um, but yeah and we also have a bunch of stuff that we need to get pulled from the garden so we'll help them check that out as well. So I'm in the greenhouse and 
we are trying to experiment out with um, just some seeds to see if we can get it get anything to grow in here like for winter wise um, so Aaron put a heat lamp up here um, but we do it's already there's things blooming and I just did this last weekend so it's only been a week so radishes um, I did a lot of lettuce Swiss chard there's more lettuce and then I did some chives which there is I just saw a little chive somewhere anyway so it seems like everything so far like this is this is I planted some beets too there's little you probably can't see that a little red anywho and then we moved the chamomile from the garden in here into a pot in here because we're going to try to keep it going because we drink a lot of chamomile tea so it looks a little sad right now although it does look better than what it did last weekend yeah, most definitely. so so far so good hopefully it'll keep going and we can have like fresh lettuce and fresh beets throughout the winter you want to explain the boxes you're building so they're called cold cold boxes it just is basically. Everybody has their own name for it, it seems. So. Yeah, it just is basically a little greenhouse box, but they're like ten inches tall, and they're however. Like two by four feet wide and long. But like ten inches yeah, tall. Right. And then you put, you know, you can use old windows as the that. top. Just yeah. something that you can lift up and down like a door but that's going to get the sunlight through because as long as the soil is warm your plants are going to grow and they have sunlight and all that so we're going to try i don't know when we're going to do that but that is in the plans to eventually do a couple of those so that during the winter we can just walk right out of the kitchen and open them up and have fresh lettuce and i think beets would do good in that and radishes so we uh we do have a talent flat. Uh -huh. They're four, four feet long. I could just stack two of them. Um, they, they may be six inches tall, so we could have double. two of them, yeah. double them up, and it could be like four by, or two by four by 12 inches tall. Say hi, Miss Ellie. I am mom. You sound seven months old now, huh? Documenting your whole life now, huh? Yeah. I'm growing so fast. Look how cute she is. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the flats would work too. And then we just need one. We're only going to do what? Two or three? Yeah. So we just need one sheet of there's. Or if we could just do like a big one, a big, a longer one, but I mean. We, yeah, well, we'll have to make that decision together. But if we get a piece of. It's like the corrugated roofing. It's not tin. It's made out of polycarbonate, so it doesn't cloud up and get yellow and opaque. Um, you get the polycarbonate. You cut it to fit, and then that's your roof or your yeah your that's the lid for it. You put it on a hinge. You can open it and close it, and that's how the 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 light gets in. That's how the soil stays warm. Is you're keeping the precipitation off of it. That you know the snow, the cold rain. You're keeping all that off of it, heating up the soil in the box and your food grows throughout the winter so we're really really pulling to get that done and we have some scrap wood and we have a buff orpington out <laughs> we have some scrap wood that we can use to put these things together and well there goes the binky <laughs> that that's basically it we're just going to use some of the scrap wood that we have from other projects to put these together and see if we can get it to work we don't want to spend a bunch of money on this making an exorbitant affair because it may not work so we can just scrap it next this spring if it doesn't work mm -hmm. but that's the objective of the seeds in the greenhouse with the heat lamp overnight I mean it was 80 degrees when we opened it up today that felt it's only 60 high 60s low 70s right now outside anyway so it's a beautiful day but 
we are getting down to the 20s sometimes at night. Okay. So we do need we to protect these things. Stop. You're stepping on the and everything else that is up me, there please. that we currently have growing is Bye. cold hardy. Our Brussels sprouts, our turnips. The carrots are going crazy right now because we've been keeping them wet. They're cool. The soil's cool for them. So they've peas. been growing like crazy. Yeah, the peas are doing great still too. Uh, we, I mean, we got a frost at the beginning of this week. 28 degrees. Yeah, and it frosted up and everything pretty much just left out there. I mean, even the strawberries are fine, which is weird. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it did get some things like uh, the marigolds and I think that's pretty much it. I don't think uh, it really does. The zucchini, got. the watermelon, the... Yeah, the beets and everything else are fine still. Wow. So. Just a big experiment, you know, since this is our first time around doing anything. So. Next year we'll expand it to the big garden up there where the chickens already have been. Um, when the pigs are done, when we butcher the pigs, all those panels are coming down, they're getting cleaned, and we're going to turn it into a hoop house. <laughs> and we're just going to keep trying stuff until we figure out exactly what works. We did, I tore out the pond. Um, you guys won't see that episode for a while, probably. Um, I tore out the pond down there, um, and there was two, three inches worth of material that had fallen into the pond. Dead, uh, you know, tadpoles and frogs and snakes and all this algae material and everything and that's what's in those right now is all that mm -hmm. fantastic compost that the mm -hmm. pond created and then we have our compost box we have garlic that we planted uh you guys haven't that episode that hasn't aired yet we have garlic planted um where we use the pond scum the uh compost that we've made that's our topsoil we put down uh straw and in another bed we did straw and all the vegetation that we tore out of everything else because everything that you take out has the nutrients that have been pulled from the soil so you take all those and put them back into the soil and let it rot rot over the winter our chickens are going to go in there we have to put chicken wire up again around what is going to come back next year like the strawberries the asparagus um what's that the caraway caraway is yeah. another one uh it's going to get chicken wire around it to protect it and Everything else is basically going to get torn out by the chickens. They're going to poop in everything. They're going to turn the soil for us. Um, next year, hopefully, by this time, we'll have all of this material from our 30 meat chickens that we're going to get Tuesday, uh, the chickens that we're keeping uh, to lay our eggs, all the grass clippings, all the leaves that we can get up. Everything's going to get composted and turned into this great black material. Also, the blood from when we put your pig oh yeah and the blood meal chicken, and, and bone meal you can mix that Fantastic. in with your soil and mm -hmm. that's really I got good like now. Oh. yeah it looks like you got bull onions kid look how cute tell them about your new overalls for your birthday hey handsome hey i got a little more yeah, you got your lawnmower. <laughs> this is, I guess we're catching up with you guys because we haven't seen you in a while. Uh, like I said, uh, one of my yeah. friends was killed, um, and it hit real hard. So we haven't, I haven't been editing, so I apologize about that. Um, but he wouldn't want us to fail at what we're doing because he really loved everything that we're doing here. He loved it. He loved hearing about it, and uh, so we're gonna keep keep working at it we're going to keep showing you guys what we're doing so that we can help you do it please watch our failures go back and watch all of our old videos share them like them comment on them you know all these people that already have these videos going they get so much interaction and that makes the algorithm put them first amongst everyone else so please the more you interact with us the more you interact with us on social media the more you share the better that we can do and the more people we can help that's really all that we're doing is just showing our failures to help people. So. <laughs> and we're teaching our kids how to do it. Yeah. So. Good. 
strawberries pulled right out of the garden. <laughs> Look at that face. A little, a little sour, huh? Noah, are you macking on some uh, magnolia sweet peas? <laughs> Look if you can find you a little one. Plants for next year, Riggin. That one plant. Well, that was a plant. That was a different that plant. Was a plant. That was the one that was inside. Look how many. I mean, all the way over there. Isn't that crazy? What do I eat now? Now, as we did with the other garden uh, garden boxes when we did the garlic, we take our pitchfork and just break up the soil. We're not we're not tilling ever again. That was a nightmare. Um, I'll show you a couple of the boxes that are still. This was tilled and tilled and tilled and tilled. Look at all the weeds. Vulcan's bush shard. Tilled and tilled and tilled and tilled. Look at all the weeds and clover. This is our garbage box. This is where a bunch of material went after we cut down all the dead plants. These are our garlic boxes. Two full boxes. How much garlic? One full pound of garlic we put in those? A half pound? Wow, that was a lot of garlic. Uh, we did five or six cloves by... I mean, there's, there's 64 cloves sitting over there in the ground waiting for spring. Slowly growing. Super fantastic. I mean, tons of, those are carrot seeds that need to be pulled. Asparagus. That's a giant carrot. Look at the size of this carrot. But it's gone to seed. So yeah. It's not, I don't it's think not it's viable to eat, but yeah. these are carrots. There's more carrots. Let me show you the more carrots that we have. And this isn't even all the carrot seeds that we got. Look at, there's more carrots. After the frost. Look at how well they're doing. This is all artificial. This is, we took all the weeds. Everywhere that you see hay, we took the weeds out with a hoe. We hoed every square inch of this outside of the garden boxes. Threw all the material in here with dirt from over there that we had, had that we put in the garden boxes themselves. So all of this is weeds and topsoil from the farm down below. And that's the soft, squishy, awesome soil Noah, that hopefully you like it? the carrots will grow out of. Oh, the turnips. Okay. Turnips. They're doing fantastic. We're saving those for our friends when they come over to check out, to pull some uh, turnips, to thin them out because we have some really good turnips. And what do we decide? They they have a carrot texture and a potato taste, right? Um. No, it was. Uh, what was it? It was... They're softer than a potato. Guys, please stop eating those. I don't... Well, no one already ripped it off, so... Uh, okay, so what? they're eating onion greens. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this boy! He doesn't eat anything cooked that's a vegetable. Noah, stop taking them But he will, off. he will smash some raw veggies. He got, yeah. The green beans? Look, I mean, he just shoved it in a <laughs> No, is that good? <laughs> Oh, all right, folks. We got to get in and clean some stuff up. Finish cleaning up outside for this couple that's going to come out and tour and ask us hopefully a billion questions. Hopefully they're down to be part of the episode so that we can answer all their questions for you as well. You wearing grandpa's jacket? Well, Stan, what did you think? Our friends, our visitors just left after touring the homestead. Uh, that was freaking cool. <laughs> So, Alyssa, Jake, thank you so much, guys, for coming out and checking everything out um, and for wanting to learn. That was... Yeah. That's probably the coolest thing that's happened so far on the homestead. Yeah. Except for getting our chickens to lay their first eggs. <laughs> uh, I will come push you in a little bit, honey. Man, that was cool. We greatly appreciate you guys coming out and being so thorough with your questions. Um... And guys, it's so weird that people want to, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's 
like, well, we, huh? like you were just saying, it's like, you know, we're in this every day looking at it going, man, this is okay, we're doing all right, and they were uh, rather uh, gracious and impressed with what we've been doing, so um, that was way too cool, guys. Thank you for coming out. Um, we're very humbled that you wanted to come and check things out with us. And uh, I was saying on the Instagram, and I will do it here as well, I'm going to get a list of our books that we have, and we're also going to put up, probably, we'll talk about it, we're going to put up a list of the YouTubers that we follow, so you guys can also learn what we've learned from them. Like, we're not here making any great bounds of wisdom that we've done ourselves. We continue to learn from the homesteading community on YouTube and the homesteading community on Facebook and Instagram and everything like that. Uh, we're learning constantly from them as well. So if we can learn all this stuff, then we'd like for you to learn it as well from them. Because, like, Polly Face Farm, um, like, Justin Rhodes, like, Doug and Stacy, uh, there's just a plethora of information out there. And we're, we're very few and far between. Um, Not a whole lot of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Getting out of the consumerist mindset mm -hmm. and into a production mindset. And doing it with... Or being able. Yeah, that too. Know. You might be stuck in the city checking out these videos and thinking they're cool, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, there's ways for... Uh, my buddy Alex is doing stuff in his apartment in Florida. So there's ways around... You can grow in pots. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's those tower gardens that yeah. people get. Those are freaking cool. They're a little expensive, but if you're going to spend the money on it and have it for the rest of your lives, then it's worth the investment to be able to grow your own food out of those things. So everything, what is it from Jurassic Park? Life finds a way. <laughs> so if you have any questions, like they had so many questions, it and it great. was fantastic yeah. and very well educated, very honestly curious questions, and it was fantastic. So if you guys have any questions, please, like our buddy Billy, he's constantly leaving comments about recipes for what we're doing or how, how did you do that? And we're more than happy to help and to educate people or to send you to the people that know better than us. So it was fantastic having you guys out and you're welcome anytime. Hopefully we can go tour their home. Uh, show you, well, may or may not get to show you the property, but we'll tell you about it afterwards. But they look like they have a giant spread that is just wanting for all the different projects that they were asking about. So that was fantastic I'm over the moon the kids were little angels and they showed off their their chicken kid wrangling. yeah they're chicken and wrangling their awesome homesteading skills we were in the garden and Reagan ran up to us with a turnip he was like hey check us out it's like oh that was a gigantic turnip good job so uh, we are exuberant and happy about the visit uh, we didn't record it we asked him if uh, he wanted to be part of the video but uh, we never got a reply about it so we didn't we just left the camera inside and answered questions and focused on that. So we hope that you'll forgive us for that. But if you have any questions, please, if we don't have an answer, we'll point you to the person that has the answer and a lot more wisdom than we have. But that was really fun. We might have to set up tour days. <laughs> like once a month when spring rolls around about what we're doing. But thank you guys again. That was so much fun. All right, guys. So it is feeding time. It has cooled off quite a bit. It's like 20 degrees cooler today, uh, right now. Handy dandy buckets. If you're in a homestead, you need lots of buckets. Yeah. You guys have seen all this. We're just feeding. Pigs are getting about... each now a day. I've heard five is the optimum number, five to like eight pounds. <clears throat> but we are currently just doing that. <clears throat> mm, chickens usually get two big red scoops. Uh, this is like 90 or 64 ounces, I think, is what it is. 
but they still have food left in their feeder, and they're really not going to be eating that much tonight anyway, as it's pretty colder. I'll move their food and their water into the nesting box, or to the, the coop for them. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's cooling off considerably. We got storms moving in, you can hear the thunder from I don't know how much the last video played, or recorded, played, so we'll fix this in editing. But, temperature is dropping, we got to get everybody fed, and get the greenhouse closed. We did have, as you saw earlier, we had the fortunate uh, help from, our, from my father-in-law. Uh, of getting tomatoes and cantaloupe. We're going to leave that up here. Take the chicken feed down. We're going to move it into the coop. Yeah, you probably should go into the coop there, Bantam. Our Bantam still escapes the fence every day. And go into the woods. But it's getting colder, so hopefully they will figure out that it's much nicer in the coop than it is out in the wild. Uh, I have found about a dozen of their eggs, but uh, it's really aggravating because I'm not getting back what I'm putting into them because they're escaping. So I'm not getting the eggs, I'm not getting them working in the area that I want them to work and clearing because they're just running around and doing whatever they want. So we're going to get the feed and the water in because there's a storm coming and I would like them to have food and water tonight. <laughs> oh, look at the mood lighting I gave you. Now, we have seen a considerable drop in the necessity of feeding. We were feeding two scoops in the morning, two scoops at night when they were in the big coop. But now that they're on pasture, I just put, there's, there's already a scoop of food in their feeder. I just put two scoops in there, well, a scoop and three quarters. There's no, there's no need to feed them as much when you have them on pasture. Seventy percent, if you watch Justin Rhodes uh, and Joel Salatin, you will learn that seventy percent of what these animals need is right here in the grass. That's my cue. Let us get some water for the pigs. All right, we'll close up the greenhouse and turn on the light. And then we're going to hide inside while this storm blows through. <laughs> well, we have been working on, please don't spit your milk out, honey. We have been working on shorter videos, um, had been, before our break. So hopefully this one is short enough for everyone. It should only be like 15, 20 minutes, but hey, that's fine. We didn't get a lot of recording done today, and uh, that's all right. <clears throat> we caught you up a little bit. Um, we had our friends over. We check things out, and that went fantastically. Like I said earlier, please, if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to ask. If we don't know, we'll send you to the person that does know. Hello. Uh, hi. I don't know if I'm even on camera. <laughs> we'll send you to the person that does know. We are having pork chops with potatoes and green beans, but they were cooked and sauteed in Sam's cowboy candy jam which is a pepper jam that she made, and it's fantastic, and it goes great on pork chops. Mm-hmm. That's where the marinade. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, we were just discussing, asking the kids if they had a good weekend, and uh, it was way too short, as usual, as it always is. But we hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be back with more content, and we have some ideas that we, we've been talking about today off-camera 
that we're going to start implementing and we're going to bring to you guys as we make them happen. Mm -hmm. So it might take a while. Yeah. For some of them. Starting in spring with like uh, we have decided again that we're going with goats. <laughs> uh, well, Nigerian dwarf goats. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them a little bit about them, like the birthing cycle and everything, because you have that um, down pat. So they are smaller go goats. They're not very. They don't get very big. Um, yeah, they are milk goats. So I really want a dairy cow, but I want to start off small and just see how that goes, um, because you know the least amount of any dairy cow, like a like a Dexter cow, will produce at the least amount, like three gallons of milk a day. That's a lot of milk. That's a, that's a lot of milk. It is a lot of milk. Anyway, so the Nigerian dwarf goats they produce like two quarts of milk a day. Um, they have a higher butter fat content, um, so it makes the milk sweeter. Um, goats. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, um, goat's milk is apparently it was better for you, supposedly. Um, easier to digest. All that. <laughs> and then um, most goats you can only breed, they're only breedable like once a year. Um, these Nigerian dwarf goats are, you, they're ready to go every 21 days. So, we could, if we time it right to where they have, you know, if we have four, what are female goats called? Whatever. If we have four female goats, we could have two due in October and two due in April and be in fresh milk all year. And there's so many things you can make with milk. That's why I want a milk cow so bad. But, um, anyhow. Oh, they're referred to as goads or nannies. Mm. Intact males are bucks or billies. Mm. Juveniles are called kids. You gotta go potty? Yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. We're gonna use the goats to clear. I think we've already talked about this. We talked about it a while back, like no. 20 videos ago. We're gonna use the goats to clear so that we can put up a barn where the goats are gonna stay. We're gonna get the cow. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to continue to move. We're going to have seven paddocks, I think is what we've, I've figured out. We're going to have seven paddocks that we move all the animals through. First it'll be the goats, followed by chickens, followed by the cow. So the, the goats have a parasite in their stomach that basically, once it, once it falls out of the goat and hits the ground, in four days the parasite becomes viable. So four days on a pasture for goats. We move them out. The chickens come in and eat the, the parasite, which it can't attach to a chicken. It has to attach to a goat. Mm -hmm. So the chickens eat the parasites and the flies oh, in the poop, spread the manure, they drop manure. Then the cow comes in behind them and finishes clearing the land. We have chickens follow the, the cow and we just move them we we'll have seven paddocks, so at any given time, half of our pasture is recovering. So within a month or so, we Noah, should be back in paddock them. one. So it's going to be very interesting to see how we make this work, but that's the plan so far. Um, and our plan is very rough. <laughs> we <won't> out. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and men, as Winston Churchill said. Um, and hopefully next year we can catch a swarm, because uh, I would love to have honeybees, you know. Um, $7 for half a pound. Um, I've seen estimates between two and four grand from a single hive a year. And all well, we have I mean, right now is a single hive, so. Not even, not even selling it, just to have it for us. Because I eat at least two tablespoons of honey every night and that's only if I use it only in my tea so you know it's yeah that's be a bare minimum that you use I think 
Yeah, you know, that's, that's a fair estimate. <laughs> but, so goats and bees next spring, and then somehow or another figure out how we can do it and get a cow that's hopefully pregnant. And has been handled. And has been handled well. Um, Which, I mean, that may be in a couple, that may be a couple years down the road. Mm -hmm. You know. I, I really want to, like, make the goal, like, within <laughs> a year, within a year of getting the goal. So maybe not this spring, but next spring. Noah, please put your napkin down, son. Get, get it out of your plate. Where did you fork? He just picked it up with his napkin. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> goat within a year, cow, and uh, we have we have talked about stepping up our chicken production and selling those. So, I don't know. We're kind of rambling now, but it's the end of the video. We thought we'd catch you up on some ideas and plans and what's been going on. So. Uh, we really, we really thank you for sticking with us and coming mm -hmm. back and watching this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, share it. Tell us everything that we're doing wrong and that we're idiots. So leave a comment, please. <laughs> Find us on social media. It's Cedar Valley Homesteading on Instagram and Facebook. It's CV Homesteading on Twitter, but I really just post the stuff on Instagram to Twitter, so it's basically the same thing. Um, and we have a big surprise coming soon from my dear wife, <laughs> but we're not gonna, it's not a baby, it's not a baby, but we're not gonna tell you what's going on right now because all the plans are still in the works, so that will be coming soon. Will you like call me for a second? <laughs> oh, excuse you. They're very, very tired children. They're <laughs> pretty uh, flat happy. Had a long weekend, mm -hmm. huh? But as it is, guys, I'm Aaron. I'm Sam. And we are Cedar Valley Homesteading, and we thank you so much for joining us. Please look forward to videos at least weekly, and hopefully we can pull up some of Sam's recipe videos and get those posted in between the weekend videos. But remember, if you don't do it for yourself, nobody's going to do it for you, at least not for free. Bye. Say bye. Say bye, Noah. Bye. Thanks, guys.